those of you who are here. We're excited for those of you tuning in live and for those of you who are getting to travel and see family members. It's just a really great time of year. So go ahead and stand up. Uh, just know it is going to be a bit cozy today. We got a lot of people traveling, so if you want to come closer to the front, we got plenty of room. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a great Sunday. We've got Christmas coming up this weekend. And so as we sing and as we worship this morning, it's just a time with family. It's time to grow closer. It's a time to be together. And so I really invite you to engage with that today. Not just as we sing, but in our take three, during the message, after church today, we get to be in these groups of five. Things are slowly looking up. So let's really engage with that. Jesus, we thank you for everything that you've done. We thank you that as we continue to follow, as we continue to trust, as we continue to hope in you, you keep making a way. And I pray for every person in this room, for every person watching the stream, that you just fill them with your joy and your peace and your celebration right now. In your amazing and mighty and powerful name. Amen. There is a promised land waiting for me. Sometimes there's an ocean that lies in between. I'll keep on traveling the path where you've been till I'm right where you want me. That's where I will be. Freedom's coming and it has a name. Joyful and triumphant 
come let us adore him Christ the of angels sing in exaltation sing all ye citizens of heaven above glory to God in the highest oh come center back on what we do know, and we do know that you came, that you conquered, and that you're faithful. So Father, as we sing these carols, help them to take an even deeper root in our confidence this morning, in our confidence that you who promised are faithful and that you always will be, even when what's happening around us doesn't look like it, that you are faithful. Searching for shadows. 
one in the middle of the chapter is the scene where Mary meets Elizabeth and she's excited she has this anticipation and as she comes and she speaks to him sorry if I'm hijacking part of your message <laughs> there's just that joy and I love what Elizabeth says and in verse 45 it's blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her and I like that it's blessed is she who believed not she who's receiving, she whose prayers answered, but blessed is he who believed. And I think that's the thing that's gonna encourage us is knowing that the blessings and the joy and the lightness that we carry comes from that anticipation of what God is always doing and how he's always working. And he's answered so much of our prayers this year. And there's been so many things we can be thankful for. But that doesn't mean this season now is bringing anxiety for a lot of us in a lot of ways. Many of us are traveling, many of us are going to be here in Singapore, and just knowing that we can rest in that belief that God is working and that we get to celebrate Him, Noel, and just what He's done in our lives. And so I just want to stay in that space for a second and just knowing that whatever it is that we're carrying, God can just carry that for us, as Arlie said. He's always there. And so let's have this season of celebration and that we can celebrate the God that walks with us every day. And that's here on earth just to be with us. And, yeah. Yes, Jesus, we thank you that out of, out of this space of trust, we can, we can continue to grab hold of all of those promises that no matter what the situation, I really feel like some of us are carrying things for other people too. We're praying for people. We're believing for people. And right here in this space, the response of that, that faith, that understanding, that awareness. It's like the response of Jesus, right? And so we have this opportunity now to step in our offerings and, our, and speaking of an offering of a child coming to earth to save all of us, we have this opportunity to respond to that same offering in our own way. So whether that is through raising our voices in gratitude when it does not feel like we want to raise our voices in gratitude, or whether that's quite literally financial offerings. So if you're giving at home, there's going to be a QR code that's displayed. You can give on, on online um, or you can give in person and there's boxes out in the back. We're going to pray over all of these prayers and praises that we have and over all of these offerings that we're going to give in prayers. But in finance as well that enable us to continue to meet every single week and all the weeks ahead. So why don't we pray? 
Heavenly Father, thank you for just this moment here where we get to experience you and we get to just reflect on the joy that it is you bring into this world. And we just pray over your provision. We thank you that you're always here, you're always listening, you're always walking us through and blessing us in ways that we don't even recognize in the moment. And so we just pray in this season for whatever that looks like for each of us that we can just experience you in the small moments, in the moments of quiet, in the moments of just thankfulness for what you do every day. And thank you that we get to celebrate this season, celebrate the Christmas spirit and atmosphere. And so just allow that joy to enter our hearts. Allow us to just receive what you have for us. And as Corey said, to just be support for others and allow them to lean on us as well. Keep us mindful, keep us present. And thank you for the things that you bless us with. Yes, Father, we just thank you. And actually, we speak supernatural provision right now. Um, there's been some prayers in this family for um, somebody who's currently quarantined and who has a, a great amount of finance that's tied up with that. And we thank you for your supernatural um, breakthrough in that moment, uh, breakthrough in awareness, breakthrough in, um, yeah, terms and conditions. Uh, your overall breakthrough. And Father, we're also praying, some people are praying for patience this, this holiday season. Um, and so as we continue to believe for these great things, we thank you for the celebrations. We thank you for Christmas shopping that's done weeks in advance that reduces mountains of stress. We thank you for joy and laughter and humor in the moments all around us. So we speak again this lightness over all of our plans. Whatever they look like, we speak a supernatural lightness over them in Jesus, in your mighty name. Amen. 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 And everybody said. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Wow, full house tonight. <laughs> yeah. Actually, for everyone who's traveling, it is. Welcome to church. Welcome. You can take a seat. Make yourselves comfortable. It's such a privilege to be able to be here together, and we're so excited for everything that's ahead. What's ahead? Uh, well, just first off, I want to say we had a fun night on Friday with youth. We got to cap it off with a nice movie, and it's just been a great month with events, with Epic Vibe. And so coming up, we have on a week from yesterday, so that'll be Saturday, correct? Or for what day our is Christmas Eve Friday. service, Friday, Friday. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. We have our service coming up. It'll be here at 7.30 p.m. and 8.30. So we have Until 8.30. 7.30 till 8.30? 7.30 to 8.30. Oh. One service, 7.30 dash 8.30. 7.30 8.30. To clarify, <laughs> I know that some people were asking. The invite has gone out um, yesterday. Share that with all of your friends. We want to be able to celebrate Christmas together, right? And I know there. I, I know a lot of people who don't necessarily believe in Christmas or believe in Jesus, and it becomes a consumer thing. And they're even asking, "Are you doing Christmas service? What is it looking like?" And so, even though people might not be asking you, share with that space with them. Even if you're traveling tomorrow, or you're already on on holiday, there are people here who need to encounter this family, this space, this safe space to just be able to put down the bags and sing, hopefully properly sing songs, sorry, um, about Jesus, right? Celebrate he who can, he who will, he who has. And so invite your friends, invite everybody, and yeah. Yeah, so we're going to move into one of the most enjoyable parts of service, which is take three. Um, take a moment, just talk to the person next to you. Um, get to know them, have a conversation that can't be finished here in this moment, that you can continue outside of the service, and we'll meet back.
It's going to be awesome. I better look at my message. What is it? Oh, I'm on. <laughs> what am I talking on today? Christmas. This is us. Hello, YouTube. That awkward silence when nobody's ready. Oh. Good morning. Uh, am I allowed to say Merry Christmas? This is the last Sunday service of 2021. <laughs> Goodbye, 2021. I've got the feeling we're all really looking forward to 2023. Um, and I'm just putting that out there now that yeah, let's look for if we have something to look forward to let's look forward to that before we start I want to pray for everyone that is traveling tonight uh, tomorrow and this week those that are in the midst of traveling I know that we have somebody at the moment that um, is stuck in their transit place for seven days now um, I know that this is not easy for those of you that are in the midst of your traveling or are, and I just want to pray for a real peace of mind and for clarity in any decisions that still need to be made, and also for just protection as you travel. So if everyone online could join with this and let's just agree together. Thank you, Father, for everybody that is about to travel, that are um, contemplating whether to continue with trips or not. I pray for your hand and your voice to just speak really clearly, that they would know that they know what the right choice is, that we wouldn't get um, fooled into the, the fallacy of sunk cost, <laughs> that we would make the decision that is the best decision for our situations in Jesus' name. I pray for absolute protection. I pray for blessing and favor for the recovery of any costs involved with travel or hotel or trips, that you would give every person favor with airlines and hotels and customs and visas and everything else, and that this would be a season of joy, no matter what choice people make, that the that you would guide us into making decisions that bring peace and joy into our families and into those that we're connected with. Thank you, Father, for your hand in all of this. In Jesus' name, amen. Cool. So in the midst of all of that, we are, um, we've been celebrating Christmas. We've been framing it around the season of Advent, which is something we've actually never done before. And we're, we're building up now. We're building up to this Friday. So as I said, we're not having a service here next Sunday. Next Sunday is Boxing Day. Sleep in um, or enjoy the kids jumping on you as you play with toys and whatever else is going to happen. But you don't have to be here. But of course, Christmas Eve, we will be. And we can't wait. So as Corey said, it is 7.30. It's going to be just a lovely service and nice time together. We're going to keep it to one hour or less. And so we'll um, love to see you down here. And this has been a really interesting season. And I know I've used the word interesting a lot in the last 18 months, but it is a really interesting season. And I think something that God's been putting on my heart a lot is that we need to be aware that when we're going through seasons like this, it is an opportunity to change. And so I know I've, I've said it quite firmly or whatever, strongly in the last few weeks, but if you're here in this season, in this church at that t this time, it's an opportunity for you to change. It's an opportunity for me to change. We are here to be transformed. That is the purpose of doing life together. It's the purpose of church. We're not here to be reinforced in exactly who we are so that we don't change anything, we don't move to a new strength, we don't move forward. No, we want to move, we want to grow. Whether we're 
you know, in youth and we're in high school or we're at university or national service or our jobs or our families, we want to grow. And so this time is an opportunity to grow, to actually grow up and mature, to, to put aside, if you like, the, the moaning and the complaining and the struggle that we have with change and actually embrace it. And so as I was praying about what 2022 is going to look like this year, I really wanted to take the theme of change. And so this year I've, I've done our year overview for the next year. Normally I do a year overview, I pray about it, and I come up with kind of 12 themes. And we run the themes past the t team, and then we have our 12 themes for the year. As soon as I sat down, I got the idea of the book of Matthew. Just giving you a bit of a prompt. This is like an ad for next year. It's not my message yet. And so the, the four Gospels, there's a, a book by an author called Alexander Shire. And he looked at the four Gospels from an anthropological and a psychological viewpoint. And he noticed that the four Gospels answer the four questions of life, which is how do I face change? How do I walk through suffering? Then in the original order of the Gospels, it went John and then Luke. So then how do I embrace joy once I've walked through suffering? And how do I turn that experience into action? And that's the Gospel of Luke. And so praying about it, I thought, if this is about change and transformation, if the Gospel is here to transform the way we see God and the way we see him in our lives, then let's take the Gospel of Matthew and study it for a year. And so we've mapped it out. We're actually only going to get to chapter 11. So next year, our, our mes the messages and the, the themes are going to follow from Matthew 2, taking this beautiful poetic arc through to ending on Matthew 11 in November next year. And it's something we've never done before as a church. And I just, this is an advertisement. Cause it's going to be fun. It's going to be an amazing journey. And we're really going to spend some time in the Sermon on the Mount looking at what our faith is, what the kingdom of God is, and what it means for us personally as we think about things as our future hope and as who we are in the world and who we are in all of our different areas of influence and impact and relationships. So I can't wait to go on that journey with you, and it's going to start when we get back um, on Sunday the 2nd of January. So, woohoo! Cool. So, Looking at Christmas, I'd love to revisit the scripture we looked at in the first week, which is, what is all of this building towards? And we started in the book of John, uh, chapter 17, where Jesus was praying for his disciples and praying for all that would believe in him. And part of it, he said, righteous father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. And so knowing that, that this whole thing is about God dwelling in us, is about Jesus and everything that he represented and was, which is the manifestation of the grace of God, which is forgiveness and joy and love and hope that this whole thing is about these rising in us. And so what I want to invite you to as you reflect on Christmas and the birth of Jesus over the next five or six days, I say five or six because I'm really bad at maths on the go, <laughs> um, that not only are we celebrating Jesus who physically walked on the earth 2,000 years ago, we're also celebrating and reflecting on Jesus who rises in your life. That as we think about the story of Mary as she gave birth to him, I want you to think about your own life as you give birth to how God wants to reveal himself through you. That in the same way she carried the Son of God, as she carried the Christ, you carry the Christ in every element and relationship of your life. And so there's a whole lot of parallels that we can draw on. So we're going to spend some time today in Luke. We're going to start, we're in Luke 1, and we're going to start about halfway down. Um, when you guys are ready, oh, we're going to skip that one. <laughs> so we're going to go to Luke 1, uh, verse, I think it's 26. 
So we learned last week about Elizabeth who was uh, pregnant with John the Baptist in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy. And actually, I'm going to stop right there because the interesting thing is when God does things in our life, we can't look at it in the isolation of us and our life and our circumstance. And often we do. We sit at church and God gives us a revelation or we start thinking about who he's going to mold us into in 2022. And we forget that the person next to us is also pregnant with the purpose of God. And the person we encounter later in the day who don't even identify as a Christian are also pregnant with the purposes of God. And that when you walk with them, when you encounter them, you can help bring alive the things that are in them. That we are walking together and that we're not just on an isolated plotted point in our own timeline. We are in a massive narrative that, that sweeps all of humanity. And seeing ourselves in the midst of a plan, seeing ourselves in the midst of this dance, in the midst of what the, the biblical authors called the kingdom, which fit perfectly 2,000 years ago, but in the midst of this movement, of this, this flow that is, that is grabbing us all, we're one part of it. And I want you, that's why today, and I'm telling you now so you can remind me because this always happens, we're going to finish today with communion. Your fist bumps, thank you. And, um, and it's important because communion is the recognition that we are in Christ together. Communion, not isolation. So in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent an angel, Gabriel to Nazareth, a a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. I love how suspicious she is. Mary was greatly troubled at these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. (laughs) Which is, you know, You're highly favored, well done, oh no. (laughs) And I wonder how often we do respond to that, that when I talk to you about purpose, when I talk to you about the fact that that Christ is wanting to rise in you, that God is wanting to birth things for your life, how often do you think either, no, that can't be me, or, oh no, is this going to, is this going to hijack and train wreck my plans? Does that mean I'm not just, going to be a teacher that makes a whole lot of money and then retires at the age of 45? (laughs) Does um, (laughs) certain international schools. Does does this mean I'm I'm not going to do this or that or that thing? Yeah, it does. It does. You can be a little concerned when you hear that God has more in plan for your life than you did. You can be a little concerned as you're studying and you're thinking, oh, well, I'm picking these subjects so that I can be a doctor or this or that. Be concerned because God doesn't just want you to be a doctor, an architect or this or that. He wants you to be somebody who participates in and brings the kingdom of God to earth. That's more. That's something that on some level needs to greatly trouble you. When you're making decisions about travel or plans or 2022 or 2023 or having children, you can be greatly troubled with the fact that you're not just thinking about the physical. You're not just thinking about what your life looks on paper, but you're looking about what your life looks like in the dreams of God. Because this greeting, this you are highly favored by God, comes with a responsibility. It comes with a way to walk through this world prayerfully and aware that God is walking through it with you. So the angel responded and said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. Yeah, you can be troubled, but don't be afraid. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you're to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. Now what's amazing in the original Greek where it says he will be great, The word there used is also translated as he will be holy. And the word holy means to be set apart, that he will be set apart. He will be destined for a specific purpose that affects all of humanity. That the thing that is birthed within you will be great. It will be holy. There is something in your life that is set apart 
to transform this world, to leave an impact that you cannot do on your own. And, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever, and his kingdom will never end. Now, there's an amazing book I'm reading at the moment by a guy called Brian McLaren. It's called The Secret Message of Jesus. It's all about what the kingdom of God means. That the kingdom of God is, is not somewhere you go when you die. That wasn't even a concept. The word kingdom was, of course, used then because they had kings and they had kingdoms and there were systems in place that somebody ruled within the city and within the nation and their actions influenced and impacted everybody that was a part and subject to that kingdom. And of course, it was highly significant to Israel because they had been um, unsettled that a king that was not their own was in charge, that Rome had come in and that they were part of Rome. They were under a rulership, so they were looking to be broken free from that. So on a political level, the gospel is amazing because the gospel was dealing with they want to rule themselves. They want to be free from the rule of somebody who didn't share their beliefs, values, or their best interests. But on top of that, that word kingdom you know, had a whole lot of connotations that actually in our world now, where we're democratic, where all these things, we don't have that concept. And so part of this book I'm reading is looking at what words would best um, sit beside the word kingdom in our contemporary um, world. And words like movement, words like party, words like network, words like a flow, words like dance actually fit and can be translated as kingdom. That he invites us that his dance with humanity will never end. His movement through humanity will never end. The party that he invites us into, the feast, the celebration that he invites us to partake in will never, will never end. That there's something that God is doing that is here and now and affects the way people live, not the way they die but the way they live. And it started, as we know, through the history of the Bible, it started in Israel, but it continues in us. So Mary answered, how will this be? She asked the angel, I mean, how will this be since I am a virgin? And I want to stop there because this is important for us. The things that God wants to really do in your life, the transformation he wants to do in your life, no matter who you are, can't come out of something you've done yourself. You have to be like a virgin because it's something that, ha that God does within you. It's not something that you can make happen. Anyone here that's trying to have kids at the moment knows there's certain things you have to do to get pregnant. What God's saying is when you're pregnant with his purposes, you can't sit there and make it happen. Oh, I'm going to tithe this much. I'm going to serve this much. I'm going to read this much of the Bible. And I'm going to pray this much. Now, these things are a little bit like a healthy eating plan for when you are pregnant. But actually, to get pregnant is 100% the fact that God does what he wants to do through your life. And that you allow him to move through you. There's you know, a misconception that I want to be used by God. I want to see him change the world through me. And so I need to put all my ducks in a row and do these things. He's like, no, no, be a virgin. Just be open to me. Allow me to be the one that does it. Allow it to be my strength, my dream, my creativity, my passion, my beauty through you, and then see what happens. And so the, the angel answered, you're doing well, John. I'm having one of those weeks where I'm jumping in and out of the scriptures. And he's like, is he ready? The, the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will settle on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. That word overshadow can also be translated as surround or completely encompass. It's not an overshadow as an, oh, they're really overshadowed by their spouse. It's more a an allusion to, I think it's Psalm 39, where it says we can settle in the shadow of his wings, that it's a place of nurturing and complete shelter and comfort. It's a place where, where 
if it was describing a cloud, it would completely surround you so that you couldn't really see your hand in front of your face. But the word is also used to describe things of glory. So not, it's not a cloud that's dark and gloomy, but there's a shimmer in the air. It's literally the description. A cloud that shimmers. <laughs> the Spirit of the Lord will settle on you and the power of the Most High will surround and shimmer around you. So the Holy One will be born and called the Son of God. So that the purposes of God that are set apart in your life every week, thank you. So, the, so that the purposes of God will bring his reality through your life. And then he tells her, even Elizabeth, your, rel your relative is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home, who, remember, couldn't greet her because he couldn't speak, and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, this is an important thing because let's, let's really step into our next 12 months aware that God wants to birth things in our lives. And that means that we also have to be aware as we walk with people that as we are in unity, as you're a part of this community or the community that you walk in, that there is a common vision that will come alive and leap for joy when you walk beside them. That... You're not just here on your own. You're not carrying this thing in isolation. I remember uh, we saw him in the, the anniversary video a month ago. Uh, there was a guy called Greg Linus who helped, kind of was, was a member of this church for the first year and a half. And I remember when he, he came to his first service, I was putting up the sign because we didn't have a hospitality team at that stage. We were like a month in. I was putting the sign up on the corner of Smith Street and Southbridge Road. And some guy came up behind me and said, ah, oh, this must be where I'm wanting to go because he's looking for Inspire. And when I saw him, I felt like I'd known him for years. There was something of the vision that God was planting in this place that leapt for joy when I saw him. That, that came alive, that gave me a kick and said, this is somebody that you're going to walk beside. This is somebody who is going to make you better, that's going to help you carry what I've put in your life even, even better. And I want you to find those people. I want you, when you come to Life Group, when you attend a service, when you're sitting online and you're thinking, should I type in the comment section on YouTube? Yes, you should. Good things that you're looking for that vision in you, that heartbeat in you that God has put there to come alive when you connect with others, to think this person is going to be a part of my transformation. This person is going to help me grow in my intimacy and awareness with God. That there is a, a unified, uni what do we want to call it? A uniting that happens when we walk together. The, the Bible describes that when we walk in unity, it's like the anointing oil flowing over every aspect of our life, starting with our head and our heart, going into our whole life, then going into, there's a description of it flowing over your garments and dripping off the corners, and that's a description of your life, your family, your community, until the very corners of your life, to the people that make your coffee, that you walk past as acquaintances that when you're unified and walking together with people that have the same vision, there's something that comes alive in every part of you. So Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then in a loud voice, she exclaimed, blessed are you among women and blessed is the child you bear. But why am, why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt. For blessed is she who has believed, as Rob shared before, that the Lord would fulfill her promise to her. And Mary said, my soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has been mindful of my humble state of his servant. 
Now, there's something special about this. As I go through the next few lines, which is an NIV called Mary's Prayer, I would actually like all of us, including me, to, um, to actually consider how this is significant for your life. God is, is wanting to bring something alive in you. And so this prayer is a response to that. So, uh, John, we can just skip back a verse. We'll go back to verse 47. Might even be 46. And we'll see how he goes. There we go. Uh, yep, skip forward. Go to 46. Perfect. My soul glorifies the Lord. Now, as we know, soul does not just mean some ethereal thing that dwells on us. The word soul in Hebrew is the word nefesh, which literally is throat. It's your breath and the flesh that it's held within. It's every single part of you. That all of my life, that all of my body would glorify the Lord. And my spirit would rejoice in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. Now, what I love is what she's talking about is the fact she's a 16-year-old virgin who's about to get married to somebody, and she's pregnant. And she says, God is aware that this is a broken situation. God is aware that from anybody's eyes looking at me, this doesn't look good. God is aware that I am not a princess or a queen or a holy person. I'm just me, about to marry a carpenter, and I'm pregnant. And in the midst of this brokenness, in the midst of this difficulty, he has seen this, and he's going to change the world through me. I want you to celebrate in the fact that you're just you. That when you sit back and we say nice things at church and you think, yeah, but if you really knew... Yeah, these thoughts that I have, yeah, these doubts, these fears, these worries, these challenges and these struggles I go through. That God is mindful of that. That you are just you. That you're not perfect. That you have all of these things. He is mindful of the humble state of you. And even then, all generations will call you blessed because of what he can bring into the world through you. Through you. Through no work of your own, except being aware and allowing God to transform you. Allowing God to impact you. Some people say, well, I'm, I'm not an extrovert. I can't do these things. Well, I'm very serious. Um, there, there's a couple people that almost apologize to me. They're like, oh, I know I sit like this, or, but I am listening. I'm like, I don't care. You can sit like that. You can have your sunglasses on. You can be staring at your phone the whole time because it can be awkward, somebody like me who makes eye contact with you while he's speaking. But I know that God's got you here and that he wants to do something amazing through your life, and he is. Be open to it and be more aware of the God that has called you than the brokenness that, that you see. Don't go to that propensity of seeing the one bad thing when there's 99 good things going on. He's birthing something phenomenal. I'm going to carry on. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him or those that respect him or those that are aware of the weight and the responsibility of what it is to walk with God. From generation to generation, he has performed mighty deeds with his arm. Your situation is tough, but there have been tougher situations through all of history. And history is building to a good climax. We are living in the best time for humanity. We are able to bring real change. We are able to connect on a level that we've never done before. We are able to heal and transform and do so many things that never happened before. We're in a good place, and that is the power of God throughout humanity. 
throughout this history story. The, the resurrection has been in action. And people are like, oh, really? Well, you know, the world's really bad. It's always been really bad. But there's good things happening now. So I know that it's tough at the moment. But he has helped people throughout all of this story through these tough times. And he's not going to stop doing it with you. So have faith. Breathe. And just allow him to work his story through the next step of your life. He has scattered those who have been proud in their innermost thoughts. Who have like, no, no, I have to do it on my own. It's all about me. He has filled the hungry with good things, but he's sent the rich away empty. If you're here thinking, yeah, I'm okay. It's good. It's fine. Yeah, God's going to use me. Of course he is. I mean, look at me. <laughs> That's when you don't get the opportunity for God to make you pregnant with that next thing because you've already... You've already done it yourself. You're like, yeah, I've got my plans. I'm good. Allow yourself to be uncertain because that's when he can move. He has helped his servant Israel. You can put your own name in there. He has helped me. Remembering to be merciful to Abraham and all of his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. And so as we finish today, I promise Christmas Eve, full-on Christmas service. Today I wanted to bring the message home to you in your circumstance, that we remember this every year, that we focus on the birth of Jesus, because we need to focus on the birth of what he's doing in our lives. If you are traveling tonight or tomorrow, carry what God is doing in your life with you. If you're staying here, carry with what God is doing in your life with you into each day and each step. And remember that there are people with you that have this vision, that have been called to walk beside you. So I believe hospitality team have got the communion cups. Grab one, thank you. Now we, we are looking, and I'm just gonna put this out there, we are looking for a more sustainable option. Because of the way the world works at the moment, we cannot um, give you unsealed, unpackaged food and drink. We are looking at putting communion on the calendar for the whole year so you'll know when it is. And for the weeks that we have communion, we're going to encourage you to bring your own drink. We'll have, we're looking for sustainably packaged um, juice boxes. If any of you want to take that project on, do. Because for those that haven't got their own drink, we can have some sustainably packaged drink boxes at the back. We also need to look at how we can give you something to snack on. You can bring your own snacks on the weeks, you know, communion with a Reese's cup. Woo! The point of it is not that it's red and that it's a little round wafer. The point of it is that you are sitting with people that are hoping for the next thing in God and you're remembering that it's Christ who unites us and it's Christ who is alive in us. That is communion. Actually, communion is every time we eat together. But when we do it at church, we want to look at how we can open it up. And so I'm just letting you know that that is going to be one of the things on our radar for next year. So today we still have to bear with the rip and zip. But can I encourage you in groups of less than five to grab somebody, to grab a couple people that you want to do communion with? Ali, if you want to go and have communion with your husband, you can. Um, Corey, yours as well. Just grab some people. You don't have to be on your own because this is about the, the vision in you kicking you in the guts and saying, that person's walking with me. We're together in this. We are here to encourage each other. We are here to bless each other. We are here to, to walk this thing and be transformed together. So I'm going to pray, but then you can pray together as a small group. And just spend a few moments. These guys are going to play. And I'll kick us off. And I'll meet you back up here in about a minute. Is that cool? Yeah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for this community. Thank you for those at home where their communion is a cup of tea and a ginger nut. <laughs> that you would unite us together. That you would help us to know you more that it would be the removal of our effort and it's your flesh, that it's not us 
trying to make ourselves pregnant with your purposes, but it's you and your Holy Spirit settling on us and bringing us into a place to give birth to what you're doing in this world. Thank you, Father, that it's not our efforts that we're forgiven, but it's by your blood on the cross that you saved, that you united, that you love and that you forgive. Thank you, Lord. And now I do want to finish on the same scripture we finished on two weeks ago, which is Philippians 4.4. 4. This is traditionally, if you follow Advent, this is the scripture of this Sunday. Oh, I think it was last Sunday. It's got a special name that I couldn't pronounce. But it's the call that in all of this we need to rejoice in the Lord. No matter what's going on. I just want to speak and pray that over you, that you would rejoice, that you would find joy, that you would be in a place of peace. Because as a result of that, your gentleness will be evident to all, for the Lord is near. And can we finish on this, this moment? Can you see the word, if we go to verse 5? You see the word Lord, it's capitalized. Whenever you see a capital L for the word Lord in the Bible, it's referencing what's known as, a bit of biblical nerdery here, the Tetragrammaton, which is the fancy name for the name of God. Because they didn't want to write the name Yehevahe, which was originally that the name of God is the breath of life. So when you see the phrase, the Lord is near, it's literally saying that God is as close as the air that you breathe. That as you breathe, he is near. That as you breathe and receive life, he is giving life to you. That as you have life physically, you have life spiritually. And so it doesn't matter what choices. It doesn't matter if you spend the next seven days in quarantine or the next seven days in Singapore or the next seven days traveling and seeing people you haven't seen for two years. I know on some level it very much does matter. But if you can allow him to be near in your breath, then there is life to be had there. There is life to be lived in whatever that situation is. I know it's very... It's a very detached, but also a very inclusive way of looking at these situations. But whatever happens, there is life to be found, and there is goodness to be found. And so step out without fear, allow him to lead you, and have an incredible Christmas, everyone. We love you. Can't wait to see those that can make it Christmas Eve. If you're somewhere else in the world, try and tune in. 7.30 for some of you will be like 9 o'clock in the morning, so that should be doable. Um, for some of you, it'll be 2 in the morning. Be good to see you there too. Uh, we love you, and that's it. Merry Christmas! Christmas.